Well, good afternoon, everybody. Pastor Chad Cummings here from Jefferson Gospel Open Bible Church, just to bring you a couple of quick announcements. The first of which is that I'm declaring that it is officially sweater weather in Iowa. <laughs> the weather has changed dramatically today, um, but with it, we have gotten some much needed rain, so that is certainly a blessing. But all kidding aside, I do have two very important announcements to make to you this afternoon. The first of which regards our fall schedule. Beginning tomorrow night, Wednesday night, from 6.30 to 7.30, we pick up our fall schedule. And what this means is that on Wednesday nights around here, there will be three different ministries that you and your family can get involved with. The first of which is our Kids After Christ program. This is the ministry that we have around here from, from uh, pre-K to sixth grade. And uh, you will be meeting downstairs in our fellowship hall. The second ministry that we have is our youth group, which meets during that same time. And you guys will be meeting over at the Parsonage. And so if you have children, uh, I would encourage you to get them involved in one of those two programs. The third program that we have on Wednesday nights around here is our adult class. And beginning tomorrow night, we're starting a new study. And the title of this study is Christian Ethics. Now, Christian Ethics might sound for you to be a fancy title, and you're maybe asking yourself, what in the world does that mean? Well, it's simply this. We can define it by asking four questions. What is right? What is wrong? How do we know the difference? And why should we as Christians care? And that's really the focus the guide, the vision of this class. Now we as Christians, or as humans in general, I guess, let me take a step back, we can approach morality from one of three perspectives. And I believe everybody has a perspective on morality. It's one of these. It's either the amoral view in which you look at morality as simply a myth. Right and wrong just does not exist. Ethics, that's something that has been concocted in the petri dish of human civilization. It's merely a, a, a presupposition of man's imagination. Morality is a myth. That's the amoral view. The second view is the immoral view. The immoral view basically agrees that morality exists, right and wrong is a reality, but yet there's no follow through. There's no observance of morality. Right is right, wrong is wrong, but as far as me doing that, ain't gonna happen. That would be the immoral view. The third view that uh, we as Christians hold to is the view of morals, or we could say ethics. It's the view that yes, morality is a reality, and it is something we pursue and observe. It is something that we strive for, to the glory of God. Now, I believe every human has a moral point of view, and it's one of those three. So tomorrow night, we're going to begin the class. We're going to take the bull by the horns, and I'm going to help you establish where you are at with your own personal moral point of view. And from there, we're going to launch into the pages of Scripture and take this study on, of, of ethics from what Scripture says. Because we believe as Christians that God has revealed his will concerning ethics, concerning right and wrong in the pages of scripture. And so therefore, we're going to be basing this study around the Ten Commandments. While we look at the Old Covenant law, we realize that it is not the form of our justification. Right? Paul said, by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified. And rather, instead, we look to Jesus, who is, who is the one who has fulfilled all the law and the prophets for us. But, it's, but at the same time, we ask the question, so what do we do with the Ten Commandments? What do we do with the books of Moses and the law? What do we do with those sorts of things? Well, they're still very beneficial because we take those and we observe that it represents the character and the nature of Almighty God. So, for instance, when we look at the Ten Commandments... We see the character of God written all over it. And as God's children, we can learn from that. And specifically in the area of ethics. So we're going to be taking the Ten Commandments and we're going to be establishing ethical principles. 
Then we're going to take those ethical principles and apply them to modern ethical dilemmas. Dilemmas such as abortion. Dilemmas such as gay marriage. Ethical dilemmas regarding the relationship between church and state. And we're going to tackle some pretty big topics in this class, and it's going to be a lot of fun. The third part of this class is going to take Christian ethics and uh, look at it from the perspective of history, right? Because we can learn a lot from history, and especially the history of the church. So we're going to look at different ethical uh, issues such as marriage, such as, uh, you know, education, such as politics. And we're going to look at what the church has done historically regarding these topics. And with this specifically, we're going to return back to our friends, the Puritans, and we're going to see what they had to say about some of these topics. And we're going to learn about them. We're going to learn what did they say about issues such as uh, the Sabbath uh, during the 15 and 1600s when they lived. And with that, is there anything that we can learn from them? And I think you'll find that there is. So that's kind of the class in a nutshell. It will probably uh, last several months. And uh, if you can join us, it would be a blessing to you, I believe. And uh, I believe this class is going to bear a lot of good fruit. So that begins tomorrow night, Wednesday night from 630 to 730. Bring your children, drop them off either at Kids After Christ or the youth group department. And then come and join us in the sanctuary for the adult class. Uh, it's going to be a great time in the Lord. The second announcement that I've got this afternoon regards our service this Sunday, at uh, September 13th. We have had, since the beginning of August, two baptism services. There has been a conviction in our church over the last few weeks, months, I guess, uh, that one, Jesus is Lord, and two, if I'm going to follow him as Lord, I need to be obedient and observe the commandment of water baptism. The very first thing that Jesus commands us after repenting and believing in him is to be baptized. And so maybe for you, you have made the confession of faith in Christ. He is your Lord. He is your Savior. You have shunned sin and you are pursuing righteousness and godliness in him. But yet at the same time, you'd say, you know, I've never taken the time to be water baptized. Well, I would encourage you that uh, this is your opportunity to follow him in obedience and so this Sunday, if you are interested in being water baptized, this is your opportunity. You can call me at the church to get that scheduled, or if you have any questions, or if you'd just like to simply show up on Sunday morning, uh, please be here at 9.30 in my office so I can talk to you ahead of time and, and uh, spell out some details and, and explain exactly what's going to happen and why. And uh, then during our service, we will dunk you to the glory of God. So with those two announcements, tomorrow night begins our fall schedule. This Sunday, we're having a third baptism service. Uh, with those two announcements, I wish you all the blessings of the Lord and look forward to hopefully seeing you tomorrow night. God bless you.